Hello, so in this video um, I thought it would be a good idea to look at a video uh, done by Hermann. Um, I think, I don't know, is that German or Scandinavian? But they're a reenactment group and one of the things that they focus on in particular, which I think is interesting, is the scutum and the spear. Now, um, before we have a look at their techniques, and I'll go to the beginning, there there isn't really a lot of suggestions on how the scutum and spear was used. Um, whatever sources we do have seem to be focused more on the scutum and the sword, and that has implications um, for, for the way we study this, mainly because um, the average legionary uh, is, you know, at least during the uh, late Republic and early Imperial period, are going to be using uh, Gladius, uh, which is a short stabbing sword. And then they're also going to be using a scutum, which is an, which just means a shield, really. And they go from oval to rectangular for some period of time, and then they go back to um, uh, back to oval again, essentially. Um, so they go full circle. But um, we have different testimonies on how the uh, shield was used. We have different um, depictions of how the sword was, or the shield more accurately was used, kind of from uh, I think the legionaries at Mines. We have a not the Trajan's column, but a monument uh, to Trajan, which also shows legionaries using a shield and sword. Um, and also we have testimonies like Polybius. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go through this and we're going to deconstruct this and say what's good and what is more on the experimental archaeological side. And then uh, we're going to talk about what could be improved. Um, now, again, before I begin, uh, the channel is Hurdman, um, and, you know, please show them support, because, you know, any reenactment when it comes to Roman that actually wants to do techniques, I think is better than not having any uh, channels at all. So let's begin. Okay, so we have the first technique where the person has essentially um, done an overhand thrust to the shield. The opponent has, uh, if we go back and I will um, go s put this uh, silent. So he, the, other, the person has initiated the exchange of a thrust, an overhand thrust. The person has raised their shield. Now, you know, if you're a soldier, turning away isn't going to be the best thing in the world. And I think uh, that's a primary issue with people who do reenactment who maybe don't have a martial arts experience is um, you don't really want to be doing that. And there's assertive ways in which you can raise the scutum without having to turn your head away. It's an instinctive reaction to do, but you can desensitize yourself not to do that. Um, so, you know, the person who's doing this doesn't necessarily um, portray that they are well trained. But anyway, the person thrust, they kind of shield... I don't want to say they shield bash because they don't. They shield pin and then they do an overhand uh, thrust uh, to the person because they're essentially um, now done. They're, they're essentially very vulnerable. I don't think uh, Roman soldiers would have fought like this. Um, <clears throat> so when we look at um, testimonies, for example, with Polybius, uh, we see that uh, the, the sword, the shield use is quite uh placid or quite defensive there's no evidence really from polybius that from what i've seen anyway and i haven't actually read polybius i've seen excerpts of for people quoting him from the the shield they say the scutum was the uh the scutum was used defensively in which to cover the left and right and to ward off blows essentially and the main um attack would be with the with the gladius now there's there's actually an interesting um, analogy or anecdote from, I think, the Siloge Tacticorum, which quotes a, a general, basically, um, somebody's boasting of their shield use and the general corrects them and says that 
you know, your your priority should be with your right hand and not your left hand. So he's talking about the sword hand and not the shield hand. So that would provide further evidence that maybe the scutum wasn't used in an aggressive type way. Now that kind of changes, right? And I think it's Tacitus who talks about the German tribes who punch with the shield and also um, cut. Um, simu not simultaneously but they cut in succession with sword and shield and punching with the shield can mean multiple things right it can be punching literally with the boss which roman soldiers do do and we <laughs> do do and we have um uh, depictions of uh, legionaries punching with the boss of the shield and cutting down below um so essentially they're punching towards the face and they're um, cutting low and like stabbing in the abdomen or maybe the legs or something and then we have punching with the rim of the shield because the scutum allows the uh, the shield because it's held vertically so it's held downwards rather than across it enables the uh, length of the shield to be along aligned with the arm very well which means that when you do punch with it it um you can punch with the rim and we have a gladiatorial depiction and uh we also have i think it's mines or um one of trajan's depictions showing uh uh, an infantry movie scutum holding it um towards the opponent or in formation um almost like he's shield bashing with the rim to the face so if i was to provide some feedback based on um historical sources uh, depending on what we're talking about and again like this isn't to be um dismissive to this because they're obviously doing reconstruction and any reconstruction is better than no reconstruction i would say um the engagement between these two people would be prodding with their shields and creating an opening in which to um strike or thrust and you know by by um shield bashing essentially with the rim you can create that opening in which an overhand uh thrust would be a lot more effective Okay, so um, I think that's kind of the first part. I think this kind of shield pinning might have happened. Unfortunately, we don't have any evidence to suggest whether or not it does happen. So uh, let's continue. So I really like what's uh, happening here. Um, so we'll put it on silent. So essentially, this person is thrusting. Um, they've shield pin and then they thrust now if i wanted to improve this and i actually think this can be improved um the, there's several issues with this mainly that the person is essentially charged in and exposed their entire body to somebody who's um covering themselves with them shields and again the person's looking away which i wouldn't recommend i think anybody who does any sort of martial art um would see that that's an instinctive reaction for somebody who hasn't necessarily fought a lot maybe this person is and maybe they're doing this for the demonstration of the video um but yeah i don't think it's good form to do this and um this person has exposed their entire body when they have this big shield essentially that's covering the majority of their body which they can use and that's what the shield bashing and prodding comes into play and it might be a safety thing they might not want to hurt each other because you know you do one clean blow with the shield and you hit somebody and they lose teeth because the shield goes back uh, into the face um so i understand that point but i think they're being it depends on the time period I think they're being very placid with the shield um, and maybe it just requires more training and conditioning to use it but um, I think they should be using it more aggressively depending on what era they're using the shield because if they're talking more towards Polybius's time um, their use of the shield would be more placid whereas if we go forwards in time and it might be possibly an influence of um, German or Germanic fighters using the boss of their shield as well or punching with the shield we get this more aggressive assertiveness with the oval shield or any scutum really so uh sorry let's uh continue so we see some blocking um some hints of blocking with the spear in uh, greco-roman vases or gr uh, greek vases specifically um 
but but we it's insinuated from my understanding and i could be wrong but there there isn't really any evidence to suggest you would want to block with the spear and especially because you have this very big shield as well um you you're going to want to cover yourself with that rather than um just move in entirely and gen just charge in because if this person's if this person on the right hand side is smart the moment that this person comes in he just needs to pin with the shield and thrust downwards it doesn't take a lot of effort the the shield is doing 80 percent of the work for you and um because it's so big you're going to be fencing mainly with that and the, the spear is kind of going to be used as support for that now that might not be the case always and a large portion of roman soldiers used spears as well um from my understanding i could be wrong about that but and um, this kind of idea that you parry with the spear and then uh, you just kind of move in and pin the shield which is a very awkward position um and you only really do this if you can get a really big confirmed kill and why would you do this with the spear if it's um if the spear is to be used um to gain distance because the whole point of the spear is you don't actually need to go in close to use it and if you are you know you can always drop the spear and draw your sword or gladius and be done with it um so let's continue i mean it's a very smart move um and it, you know it's very well done so if we go back to see this okay wait So this this is kind of a, akin to German fencing where you deflect a blow and then you stab in. Um, I don't know what the German term is. Maybe no, it's not the Betzen, but whatever it's called. Um, but th th the point is, you have this giant shield here that could be of better use in that situation. Why are you blocking with the spear as the main weapon when you have this shield that you can um, hide behind, essentially? Okay, let's continue. So here we go. This is this is something uh, more akin to uh, what you might want to do with the scutum. So the person. Um, so this is more towards uh, imperial uh, fighting of Romans, um, based on the source material we have. So maybe at the time of uh, Trajan or Trajan, um, with the Dacian Wars or something, um, we have this, and it, it's quite a good thing to do, but. Um, even in this situation, when you pin up a person with the shield, um, the, the benefit of um, pinning up with the shield is he's, he's essentially driven the, the shield here and he's made the person lose their guard essentially by making his shield collapse into the opponent. Now, in this situation, he can just flatten the shield punch upwards with the boss to the face and then just stab over um but i think uh, by doing this he's actually making more work for himself because if you're in a situation where you can raise the shield and basically shield punch to the face and just stab downwards like uh laterally or vertically or whatever um you it's you're going to be in a more advantageous position but this is skeptical right or this is speculative right because we'd have no source material for this so it's either right you can't confirm whether it's right or wrong So this is um, something that I would say is more akin to being more assertive. Now, there's there's a different... There's, I think there's um, certain constructive ways of looking at how this can be improved. And the, the simple reason is... Um, I think anybody who uh, wants to keep guard isn't going to charge in like this anyway. And it's pretty dangerous because you get situations like this. Um but essentially uh, the person's attacked and um this person who's shield bashed essentially uh to the face which is a, which i think is the right thing to do in some circumstances um because this person has foolishly decided to charge in so all you need to do is bring that shield bash to the face and punch i don't even think he needs to sidestep um i don't 
uh, and if he does, he only needs to peer around a bit because that shield is his guarantee of safety. So if he punches and keeps the uh, shield straight, so laterally, so or vertically or whatever, um, so up and down rather than uh, turning it accordingly, um, it gives him ample time to um, either thrust above the shield downwards or um, kind of to thrust from the side in order to hit the head. And he wants to aim for the throat or the... Um, the head in particular um because you have to remember that uh, you know unless you're like a low budget army soldier most people are going to be wearing mail um though mail arguably when it gets thrust that's another matter entirely whether or not it offers sufficient protection uh lorica squamata lorica hamata you know mail armor um and these people would wear helmets as well so maybe thrusting above the head but thrusting into the neck or um or thrusting into some part of the body might be more useful um so maybe this is right actually um but i think it's a matter of just having a good guard um and i think this is uh partly to do with the user i think um and i don't want to sound like i'm criticizing him I, you know this is constructive feedback and it needs to be emphasized it is constructive i think the um the stance could be a lot more stable and domineering and i think uh you know like a muay thai stance you know you don't cave in automatically and i know he's trying to be somewhat passive for the demonstration of the technique but um i think he could if he was the counter that i think you should have more of a stronger stance um but that's just from what i see and obviously in practice that could be a different thing entirely um and also, um, it's also in this situation, and as you see, um, actually, I'll he has to draw his spear back in order to thrust um, this person in the shoulder, which is very awkward. And, and this is kind of a thing of this guy's decided to charge in, but it's not convenient for him as well because he's getting entangled. And you have this shield in order to range find and shield bash in front, and you can punch directly in front of you without having to uh, get in this melee. And I think the problem uh, derives from the fact that he does this. Um, so he should be more facing, I think, with the shield, and it should be a more direct punch um either with the rim if he's facing if he's holding it sideward like you see in bolognese fencing where he's holding the rim towards the opponent or if he's actually just facing it with the shield covering his front he can just punch the boss out um forwards and just deny this person the opportunity to go through the person's walking into a punch in the face basically and he sort of does it right um so so if we go back, so he sort of does that, right? Um, he sort of um, punches the towards the face, which leaves the person open. Now, in this situation, I think his stance should be more widened so he can brace himself for impact. Um, but also, you know, this is something he should have dis um, done at the beginning rather than deciding to... Um, strike with the spear that shield should always be in front and it, if we're going towards kind of the imperial period it should be more assertive whereas polybius's time it seems to be more placid in its use um you know so the i think even within the roman empire there's a development on weapon use over time and you see that in gladiatorial combat as well um so anyway let's continue so it basically in short i think um a better stance and you know using the shield more directly and assertively. And I think this this one's a bit better. Because um, that person's approaching uh, kind of to the side of his shield side. So he's deciding to strike the shield for some reason. I don't think you would want to do that. I know they're trying to reenact and also safety has to be taken into consideration. But if you're striking, you want to strike at the head, right? Because the head is going to enable the other person to raise their shield. And then because they've raised their shield and they're stressing their shoulder muscles, it gives the person who's initiating the opportunity to 
um, shield bash or shield pin and then strike overhead. And these people are unarmored, so it's going to hit. Um, and also, um, the the shield really, I, I think in my opinion, the, the shield should be in front covering him when he does this. So um, if we actually go, so he should, this person here should be in this position here where he is ready to strike with the rim or ready to strike with the boss of the sword outwards. And maybe, look, I understand, um, people don't train with scutums every day and it wears on your shoulders because you're not, you haven't built the muscles up for it yet. And, you know, reenactors don't train as often as, you know, legionaries would have. So, you know, it can be tiring to carry that scutum around, but that's what the point of strength and conditioning is. So really, this person should be uh, akin to this person and either have it in front of him uh, where he can punch the boss outwards or if he's going to hold it sideways he should have the rim of the shield facing uh, his opponent which is what this person does um and i mean i guess you could say that the spear um enables a kind of distraction uh to the shield in order to uh get the person distracted enough where he can make a follow up strike um, but even then, you can accomplish what you're doing now with a shield bash with the rim uh, towards that. Or just uh, punching out with the boss, in my opinion, anyway. But I mean, he does the the German thing where he does a, a somewhat punch with the shield and then he goes in with a strike. So, I mean, and it's something akin to what Tacitus says, right? So maybe he is right. Um... So uh, let's have a look again. So you have the um, you have the spear thrust into the shield. You have a punch with the shield. Uh, you have a spear thrust with the spear. You have a punch with the shield, and then you have a um, a spear thrust, which is overhand, which is interesting because it's very similar to how you know screamer people with the sticks uh, do one after the other in this flow, and he's almost doing a similar thing with the with the shield and the spear and maybe that was the case with the sword as well uh, i don't think that it's necessary to do this large turning um i think he can establish dominance by just keeping a very firm stance um not moving back which is not doing anyway which is very good um and not making an allowances for the fact he has a large shield that large shield is to take cover behind that large shield is to enable you to be assertive and to make sure that you've pinned that person sufficiently that you can strike. Why Why go through all this uh, trouble? Or so. Why go through all this trouble of doing a sidestep when you're in an advantageous position anyway? Your spear's going to catch the back of him or the back of the neck you don't need good angling and to an extent you don't need good vision to um get the target right and i think people would have appreciated this with larger shields because he's wanting to get full dominance by going to the back but you don't need to get full dominance uh, i think any martial artist understands this as a matter of principle and uh, there we go so what do i think about this i think there's stuff that can be uh, improved upon i think there's some stuff that is okay i think it's reflective of the people doing this play or these techniques to reconstruct um i think if you're going to talk about scutum and shield depending on the time period it's going to affect the way that you use it so earlier on maybe the scutum is used more placidly and as you get um later on the, sh the scutum is used more aggressively with the boss and the rim uh, of the shield and that can be prodding that can be attacking and you're going to be doing that and thrusting at the same time and you might get that similar scream of flow drill kind of thing where you're hitting with the shield and then you're hitting with the spear and then you're hitting with the shield and him with the spear and that's something that tacitus would recommend and maybe that's something roman legionaries did as well but anyway i hope this has been somewhat constructive and um you know uh if you are seeing Herdsman channel, please do give it a look. They do experimental archaeology and Viking stuff as well. So that's it. Uh, thank you very much for watching and cheers.